you for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Um, our podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. And of course, we'll talk about your new uh, your new video and new song. Awesome. That cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, where where are you from originally? Uh, New Jersey. New Jersey. Tell me about growing up in New Jersey. Um, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed, you know, my growing up there as a kid and actually just moved out of there last year. So oh, basically wow. been there my whole life. I Where moved to Brooklyn recently. Oh, you moved to Brooklyn. So you just moved out uh, New York? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. But New Jersey is pretty cool. It's not as bad as everyone says. <laughs> it gets like a lot of hate. Oh, and really? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I guess I haven't heard the hate um, being on the West Coast, but yeah, the people, it just has like stigma or something. Yeah. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, we're pretty, everyone from New Jersey mostly is like pretty upfront about it, but people can classify us as rude but i mean i get it <laughs> but also the jersey shore didn't make it any better uh, <laughs> for our reputation that's true i didn't i forgot about that dude to be honest so maybe that's a good thing <laughs> but yeah, yeah what, i didn't think about that when jersey thinking about jersey shore that's funny um right on so you're in brooklyn now but how did you get to music uh i was always around music um I would listen like to my parents' CDs and records as a little kid. Mm -hmm. Listening to like funk and soul music growing up. Mm -hmm. I was kind of then... around that at an early age. Okay. And then what, what got you into playing? Like what was the first instrument you learned? Saxophone. Oh, really? Saxophone. Yeah. For like what the school orchestra or something? Yeah, just for symphonic band. I think oh, I cool. got into it when I was like nine. And oh, right on. And how long did you play sax for? Up until senior year in high school. Oh, cool. Um, so you went through like all of band on sax. Yeah, like I went through like the whole school system playing saxophone. Like marching band? Not marching band, just a uh, regular symphonic band. Cool. I did I did jazz band for a little bit in middle school. How did you like that? Um it was cool. Uh the our I remember like our uh our teacher, he kind of had like whiplash vibes. <laughs> 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 not like the teacher from whiplash but uh he really he really cared about the music for sure that's cool and was he willing to teach you know you said fifth grade i mean and jazz isn't the easiest <laughs> that's like the most difficult right of music to perform yeah no i mean we definitely played some cool pieces and i, I liked it like i did i only did it for three years in middle school that's cool though. Yeah, I just had the symphonic man. Yeah. And then how did like I mean, I'm listening to your records and it's a lot, it's really I mean electronic, right? Did you yeah. translate like did you play live instruments? Like have you played sax on, on your record or anything? No, I actually haven't played the saxophone since high school. I really <laughs> oh, want really? to back, yeah, I really want to get back into it, but I think it helped. I think it definitely helped my uh, production. Oh, sure. And like what, like music theory and everything, kind of knowing what notes go with what notes? Yeah, honestly, I'm not very good at music theory. I can kind of re write, uh, read sheet music, mm -hmm. but I just go off of like ear, you know, like what's right, right. good to me, but That's cool. it, it definitely helped. That's awesome. And like with uh, like going through high school performing and, and being on sax, like what did you go to college for music or like what how did you begin your musical journey? 
Um, no, nah, in, in college, I actually studied American studies in film. Oh, cool. Yeah. But and the music was always uh, just there or. Yeah. Well, what got me into music production was I took a class in high school, which was music technology. But the teacher, he taught us a little bit about garage band. Oh, really? And, That's pretty yeah, cool. For, yeah. And for some assignments, um, we would have to make a track. So just doing, I think, just doing those exercises, it, it kind of sparked, sparked an interest in me mm -hmm. for music production, wanting to learn, wanting to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of the first things, like just learning on GarageBand. And at first I just did it as a hobby and then uh -huh. I kind of got more serious into it in college. And like, like so, sorry, I mean, no, I was just gonna say, like, you got more serious in college. Like, were you just producing like songs and putting them up on SoundCloud or something? Like, what were what were you doing? Like, as far as like, how are you progressing? Yeah, so I got I got really into music production in college, and uh -huh. uh, a friend of mine, he actually had a cracked version of Ableton. I feel like a lot of producers get into this where they just get like a cracked version of Ableton. <laughs> just to mess around and try to play or try to see if yeah. they can do it. And and um, he had it and I asked him if he could help install it for me on, on my computer. Mm -hmm. and, and we would make like a handful of songs together and that's when I started be, to become kind of like obsessed with making beats. Making, that's awesome. And like yeah. from there, uh, like what was the first, um, like what kind of got the ball rolling for you when it comes to like, I mean, you have millions of streams and like you're killing it on, uh, with all your songs. Like was there a song that kind of, broke the ceiling for you to kind of push you forward um, a moment. yeah definitely but uh i guess what led to that moment was just me constantly putting out music because uh my friend my freshman year in in college uh i heard of soundcloud i guess Back in 2010, SoundCloud uh -huh. was like was like a brand new and hot thing. Sure, that people were uploading their music. So someone like a good friend of mine and also good friend of mine uh, told me about that, and uh -huh. I made a SoundCloud account. And then from you know basically all of college, I was constantly uploading music just onto your soundcloud yeah just on the soundcloud just like constantly for like my entirety of college just your, yeah yeah just constantly putting out music and uh -huh. i think from there like i generated a little following from that mm -hmm. and you know i think i but like you said uh my breakout track was probably football head Mm -hmm. uh, when I sampled uh, Jim Lang's Groove Remote from Hey Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, like with that song, like when, when did you put that out and like how did you start seeing it go? I put it out uh, a little more than like a year after college. Uh huh. But looking back on it, I think. I feel like most uh, most producers are musicians. I feel like they have a breakout track probably four or five years later. Right. Because it's just like, I don't know, I'm just like not really thinking, just like putting out whatever, uh, trying to get people to hear it. And then finally, I think all that, 
all that producing and work making making stuff on Ableton I feel uh-huh. like that led to football head like five years later mm-hmm. and then and, that song was the one that kind of caught fire for you I mean I'm looking at the numbers on Spotify and it's crazy but all your songs man are like millions of plays <laughs> that's so awesome well so with football head yeah, were you were you getting like a bunch of labels contacting you like once it started making like noise on the internet no not really but i had i had people from high school that i wasn't even really close with p like they would they would message me on facebook and they were like they were like oh i saw a football head on the front page of reddit or something <laughs> like that and and that's how i know like a person who i didn't even really know that well or wasn't very close to in high school like they're messaging me about like the stuff you're doing yeah Yeah. wow what how about was that moment like was it pretty validating or was it like told you (laughs) like i don't know (laughs) no it wasn't like that it was just it was just really crazy because Uh i never had anything like that before Uh uh-huh but, and then like what, what did that you said like well that was like your breakout track and then that just got the ball rolling for you and then it just kind of seemed like after that the more and more music you had the more people were kind of gravitating towards you yeah definitely that's awesome um, and, sorry go ahead no i think i think that really got the ball rolling i mean i put out i put out um a few albums and projects before i put out that track uh-huh. which did pretty well but uh football just like head, on really... on soundcloud or where were you putting the records out uh soundcloud Bandcamp, youtube oh cool right mm-hmm. what about music videos like i know the music video for your most recent song is super dope like were you doing those early on too you said you're a film major uh not not like a big production like that Um, okay like back then uh well another good friend of mine he goes by el famoso demon he makes a lot of uh found he pairs like a lot of beats with found footage videos he finds oh cool yeah so he did he so beginning like in the beginning stages he would put like a lot of my tracks with like these random videos and they would do they would do really well so that was like the form like the form of music videos that i that i was going for that's cool so you yeah you would put the track out and then your friend would kind of make some obscure video to it and then put it up on youtube yeah that's rad uh, what about performing? Have you got, have you uh, like DJ at any clubs or like what, like, or is it just all like producing your room, putting up on online? Um, starting out. Uh, yeah. I would. Well, when I went to college in Lancaster, uh-huh. Pennsylvania, and there was this club called the Chameleon Club. And um, when I wasn't busy doing schoolwork or uh, I had some free time, I would I would uh, perform some shows sometimes on the weekend uh, with my oh, with cool. a good friend of mine who I met in Lancaster. His name is Wani, and he was part of this uh, group called Z Plus. So it was mostly like me and Wani playing these gigs would you just it was just electronic kind of like a like a dj set yeah we would just play at uh we would just be the openers usually that's cool union club and then from there like are you you still performing live obviously up until coronavirus but i mean prior to that were you playing yeah, yeah. live mm-hmm. yeah. and do you enjoy that yeah, you it's see that you did like fun. you've done some really big festivals, right? Yeah, I de- I definitely did. Um, That's awesome. Um, was it like 
I, well, you were doing it, I guess, in Lancaster, and you were playing your own songs there, like when you when you open up for those artists at that uh, that club. Um, in the beginning. I was definitely more self-conscious mm-hmm. of my music. I would mostly play other people's tracks and sometimes sneak some of my tracks in there, but I've heard uh, that. That's kind of what, how you got to I've talked to multiple producer DJs and I kind of say that's how they start. They'll just start sneaking their songs into the set. Yeah, I I just wasn't confident uh starting out, but mm-hmm. I think I think that's okay if you're starting out. For um, sure, for sure. I, I get it, but I, after the years went on and I got better with my production, I became more confident. So, you know, now when I play shows, it's it's probably like ninety percent or mostly all my tracks. Yeah. So. Do you remember the first show you did when you were like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like almost all my own songs like do you remember the first show that you you did that um i don't know the first show but i think after uh i put out bright moments Mm -hmm. once i put out that album um i became that that was when like when that album came out, I had a pretty solid body of work at that point mm-hmm. because I had that and multiple other albums. Right. That yeah, you had a couple of, like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a lot of music out before you put out that record, right? Bright Moments. Yeah. So at, at that point, after I put that out, I would just mix like all the songs from the previous records into like one set at that point that's awesome well like what what okay so i'm sure you were probably playing pretty regularly up until uh coronavirus happened how did that affect you uh i mean i was like on the road or Uh, yeah actually my girlfriend and i we were in uh mexico when it happened oh wow was it like i know like i've talked to some people that like right when they kind of said okay you have 24 hours to get back to the states like people were freaking out like was it kind of were you freaking out or were you close enough to where you you knew you can get right back across because i'm in san diego i mean i could throw a rock and hit mexico from here so if i was in tj it would be pretty quick to get home but i don't know how far down you were and if it was like you know scary or you know worried about getting back um i think my management and my family were more uh nervous about it than i was for some reason (laughs) i mean i get it but uh i mean it was just me and my girlfriend in mexico you weren't performing Uh, or on tour or anything no actually like when when everything was shutting down i was like it was right when i was playing this festival <laughs> oh really oh my gosh yeah so, yeah so it was like right when people were all like the social distancing and mask wearing stuff they were taking it more seriously so it it, it was definitely weird because it was like, should I play or not? Go play this festival, or should I pull, pull out? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were, were there like le- way less people than you anticipated when you got to the venue, or when you got to the festival, or were people like, yeah, whatever? It was, <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. Uh, it was half. It was half uh, full. A lot of yeah. people didn't Just, show up. Or, yeah, or I've I've heard that. Like artists. I've told the story a couple of times on the podcast where like artists will say, you know, they're on like gone tour. Right. And then they knew that they sold out the next five dates. And then as they kind of start going, it's like three quarters of the people show up, half the people show up. And then it's like dwindling way down up until it was like, you know, everybody has to stop. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. That must've been wild to see like 
you know, you, you know, that festival is probably supposed to be crazy packed. And then you're like, oh, there's not really that many people here right now. Yeah. This is serious. I mean, it was still, it was still fun, but it was, it was def, it was definitely weird. Um, like people, people were trying to like shake my hand or. Yeah, you're like, after, eh. and I was like, no, oh, no, thank, thank. <laughs> <laughs> you're like i'll stand here and wave to you <laughs> it's like, oh, thank, thank you right right <laughs> oh man well i want to talk to you about your new the new song you just put out i love the animated video and i want you to talk about the intro of the song and kind of where it all came from yeah so the intro uh that's a that's a clip of my dad uh-huh uh, and I think the interview, it was him, like this, this uh, Swedish, this Swedish news station interviewed him back in the 70s when he was touring out there. And he was just talking about uh, what, what Frisbee meant to him. Sure. I found that up on YouTube. Oh, you did. That's how you found it. That's yeah. That's awesome. Did he know that you're going to do that or? Nah, he, he didn't know. I guess <laughs> it was a surprise for him. That's so cool. So, I mean, you said touring. I'm going to clarify to the audience that doesn't know your dad and, and your uncle, right? Are professional Frisbee players. Yeah, they, they did freestyle Frisbee and they won, they won five world freestyle titles together in the That's... 70s and the 80s wow do you remember did you ever get to go or were you too young um no i went i went to like some of his competitions as a little kid and he actually still competes now really so, yeah i i've went to like a few or more than a few right like a lot of competitions that's cool. That's what a nit, what a like niche environment to be in, like competitive frisbee. I think that's so sick. What did he do? Like how? And then like your the name of your you know, uh, Flingosis is like his. He coined that term or something, right? Or it's a yeah, like a move, like a frisbee move. Yeah, it's a reverse spinning catch on one leg when you're catching the frisbee. <laughs> that's crazy. Are you a fris are you good at frisbee or no? Or <laughs> what you didn't really take to it like your dad? I'm good at throwing. Uh the all the moves and stuff. I can I can't really do any of that. <laughs> but, the acrobatics of it all. <laughs> yeah. What about but, frisbee frisbee golf? Is that something your dad could crush at? Like is he super accurate where he could just like hit like a I don't know, a can from 30 yards out? He's pretty good at that too. I've definitely actually in New Jersey, there's a lot of Frisbee golf courses. Like there was, uh, there used to be a bunch right near my house. So we would definitely go and play some Frisbee golf every now and then. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. There was a course kind of by where I live too. And I tried it a couple of times. That was awful. And you'd see people come through with like, they're like, golf bag so to speak of like frisbees yeah. like different ones for like different distances and i always thought that was pretty like interesting because it's such a like sm not a very big thing you really hear a whole lot about and then having like competitive frisbee that's even probably even more yeah when, when they have the golf bag that's how you know they're they're uh they're frisbee golf connoisseur right, right. they're all <laughs> they like know the certain brand like i said yeah they'll show up and they have like the, the putter frisbee and like the, the driver frisbee <laughs> it's just hilarious oh well yeah, tell me about the music the, the, all right go ahead craft 80 mold <laughs> right 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 <laughs> uh, well uh with the tell me about the video like who animated that that's it's so rad Yes, yeah, so that's my friend Nick Parenti. Mm -hmm. Um, he's a he's an animator out of Michigan, and 
I first, well, I first met him when I played a show out there, mm-hmm. out in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And before, even before that, uh, he helped. I met him through like another friend who goes by Tokyo Megaplex. Tokyo, uh, they were doing animation for my Flight Fantastic album. Uh huh. And Tokyo's a good friend of mine. So he's doing animation for that, but he got his other friends to do some animation for it as well. And Nick was basically like a friend of a friend. So he was a friend of Tokyo. And that's how I met Nick. Oh, Tokyo. okay. And did he, and, what about the storyboard for it? Was that, was that you or did he kind of come up with? Cause I love like the way it's all edited. Like, I mean, he's, he's, he got the Frisbee spinning on his finger and he like smacks it over and it, it's almost like a transition to the next scene. And like, it's, it's yeah. such a rad video. Yeah. He, he's a beast with animation. <laughs> yeah. It's sick. It's super sick. Um, like w- with, with the whole coronavirus in the, in the video, I mean, the video is so rad aside from doing like things like that to promote your music, like as a electronic artist, is it hard to do like those live stream events or do you like have to kind of put on a big show or are you even doing it or like, tell me about that. Yeah, I do it a few times a month, the live streams. Oh, cool. And like, Usually how do you do set it. it up? Yeah. How do you, how do you do it? Uh, well, we broadcast them on Twitch. Oh, okay. And Usually doing the live streams, it's kind of a process because um, you got to do it in like how I do it is we set up a big green screen Mm -hmm. and we got to set it up in the kitchen. (laughs) Of your house? (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, because uh, our apartment's like not that big. Right, so you have to have the green screen. That's the space that will fit in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how I normally do it. And it's, it's kind of a process because it's easier when I have my roommates help me. Uh-huh. So my roommates will be chilling. I'll just be like, guys, I'm sorry. Let's but do a long stream. <laughs> can you help me with this? <laughs> <laughs> I need to set up this green screen. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Like, like hot. That's cool though. Do you set up like a whole thing? Like, I'm sure people are super into it. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely worth it. the The green screen definitely elevates the the set because mm-hmm. my other friend of mine, uh, his name is JD. He helps do visuals for my live stream. Uh-huh. So while I'm playing on the green screen, like he's doing. Oh yeah, so he he's like, so he's like keying out the green and like putting stuff behind you as you're just kind of playing. Yeah. Wow, that's rad. And do you ever watch? I mean, because you probably don't know what he's doing, like behind you, right? I mean, because you're playing, and then do you watch it back and like, oh, that was sick when you did this or this, or you know what I mean? Or do you know what he's gonna throw up behind you, kind of prior? I mean, I send him, I send him footage like that. I think that would go good. Oh, okay. With, uh, with the set. Got it. So he's not just flying blindly into the whole thing, trying to figure out what would kind of work with what you got going next or what, what record you can play. I mean, he'll definitely find footage that he found and just put it in the green screen, but I also send him like a lot of clips, uh, I actually send them like a lot of video game footage from games that I've played on my Switch. Oh, cool. You've been <laughs> so playing your Switch quite a bit with uh, quarantine? Yeah, so I'll just be playing on my Switch sometimes. And I'll just be like, oh, that's a cool. This would be a cool thing to send to JD. So I'll like record the thing on my Switch and then just send it. Oh, really? That's awesome. What games are you playing on your Switch? My kids love the Switch. Yeah. Um, Smash Bros. Oh, Super that's a good one. <laughs> uh, 
I'm already, I don't know, I've played so many, like Paper Mario, Animal Crossing. Yeah, Animal Crossing is a big one. Or is it still like, I know at the beginning, mid-corona, it was like the peak. It was like people were posting it on like, yeah, like Twitch. And like, it was like this whole whole thing going to different people's worlds and stuff. Is that, it's, I'm sure it's still pretty big, right? Yeah, it's definitely still big. Honestly, I kind of lost a little bit of interest in it because I really didn't know what to add to my island. <laughs> Your island was complete. <laughs> no, there's definitely like a lot of more, a lot more stuff that you can do. I kind of just hit a wall and I didn't really know what to add. So I, <laughs> I, I've stopped playing for a bit. But Get the creative juice is flowing again <laughs> when you come back to your island. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to get back into it, but my villagers are going to be mad at me. <laughs> they're I like they're like where the hell have you been for the past 3 months? <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know do you know they actually get mad at you like if you haven't played for a while? Really? Like, that's actually Yeah, that's actually in the game. Like <laughs> that happened to me once. And I was just saying hi to one of my villagers and they're like, "Oh wait, your name's Aaron, right?" wait where have you been this whole time? <laughs> you're like ouch <laughs> it's cold on this yeah, game like, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's funny that's really funny okay so Daymaker is you know out the video's dope um are you is that going to be part of another record you have in the works or what are you thinking yeah like a lot of these tracks i've been making it's been leading up to uh uh another project mm -hmm. for sure uh i don't know when that'll be out maybe sometime next year but it's still still in the works i'm pretty excited about it uh you know when, once everything is said and, said and done you know I'm, i'll let it you know all the fans know about it rad can't wait, dude. I, I love that song. And I'm super excited to hear the hear the rest of the record. And thank you, Aaron, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for, for taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah, definitely. This was fun. Thanks yeah, man. Well, yeah, I have one more question for you before I let you go. Um, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah. Um like if you if you truly if you truly um love creating and doing doing uh any type of art form uh i truly believe like if you really take it seriously it can it can open you know new doors for you you just have to really keep working and staying at it uh i know that's kind of that's kind of obvious what you have to do but i feel like i've i don't know i've seen like a lot of people like they they want to do this but they they don't put the work in and you just you really just have to you really just have to stay focused on what you love to do. Like if you really love it, like you'll you'll put the work in regardless, but uh just keep at it. Uh make the mute make the art that you wanna see or hear first. Like don't really it doesn't really matter what in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter what other people think. If you think it's good and you like it and it makes you feel good just keep doing it and it really it really will i think change your life if you if you stay focused and really are serious about your craft Bring it back for you.